Hey guys, welcome to the goal setting workshop. Do you know why goal setting really works? Well, there's lots of theories, but here's a couple of mine. Number one, I believe that your thoughts become your things. Whatever we focus on consistently, we experience in our life. Number two, as you think, so you create. Part of goal setting is just by having that focus, that consistent focus. You can't just set goals one time and then never look at them again and really expect long-term results. But even that's actually better than not setting goals at all. At least your subconscious mind knows the general direction that you're moving in. But the power lies in setting goals consistently and reviewing your goals all the time. If you focus on something, you will actually ex experience it in your life. Now when you set a goal, something interesting happens. When you set a goal, basically you're acknowledging to both your conscious and your subconscious mind that where you are right now is not where you want to be. The job you're doing right now is either not the job you want or it's not providing you with everything you want and need and you're searching for something more. And you begin to notice the difference between where you are and where you want to be and when you feel that distinction, your brain becomes dissatisfied and part of what motivates human action is actually your sense of dissatisfaction. Think about it, when you're totally comfortable and relaxed and feeling pleasure, you're not totally motivated to do whatever it takes to make things happen. When we get dissatisfied, that's when we have real power. one of the biggest traps that they fall into is success. When people are successful, think about it, they tend to party. When they fail, they tend to ponder. Or think about how they can get themselves into a better place. Dissatisfaction is a power that you want to take advantage of, not something new that you want to hide from. There's a real power in admitting that you are not happy with where you are right now. Most people never admit it to themselves. Now, pressure is a good thing. Pressure initiates human behavior. Pressure and tension are primary drivers of our actions. On a really simple level, think about it. What makes you want to eat? Is hunger a type of pressure? You bet it is. And learning to use that pressure in goal setting is absolutely critical because with literally no pressure to go for it, we have no motivation. So a certain amount of pressure is generated when you clearly define what it is you want and you see that you're not there. Pressure isn't necessarily negative and can be very positive. And if you look at it as a tool for yourself and take consistent action towards your goals, I'm sure you've heard the metaphor before that pressure is how diamonds are created. They're just rocks under intense pressure and then they're turned into a gem. Use that same metaphor for yourself and use goals as a way of pressuring yourself. Okay, you ready? I hope you've got your manual printed out. Because right now, we're going to go for it. But before we do, I'm going to give you a couple of quick instructions. Number one, in this exercise, you're going to be doing the writing and the goal setting while the audio is running. The reason why is because in the past, I've done goal setting workshops where I gave... instructions that at the end of the recording they were supposed to do it but a lot of the research showed that many people didn't follow through so this is designed to be a real-time audio program it's designed to, to prompt you to really follow through and here's a couple of key points to remember number one if you're in your car right now you can't do this in your car and be effective and it's tough to do while you're on the train or the bus because you don't have privacy and you can't, well, you can't really focus. So if you're in your car or on a bus or on a train, I suggest you wait until you're home and you've got a quiet environment to work in. Number two, please put your phone on silent. Shut down your computer. Turn off all your social media just while this workshop is running. This time is for you. Allow yourself this privacy to set your goals and really succeed. 
One of the biggest challenges for people is they, is they get interrupted in the middle of a goal setting workshop and you don't want that to happen. So let people know that you can't be disturbed and you're just going to focus all of your energy and power on creating a compelling future, one that will really drive you to use all of your ability and skill and make your life the way you really want it to be. And number three, leave the audio running. I designed this whole program so that whatever period of time we've given you for a set of goals or an exercise, I'll be with you. Or we'll have some music going in the background. And when the music is complete, it's time for the next exercise and I'll come back with you and give you some information. But again, please write for the entire time you hear the music. Don't get lazy, keep your, your pen moving the whole time. Along the way, I'll be saying a few things to you to kind of trigger your mind a little bit or prompt you, but as soon as the music is done, I'll come back on and then we'll move on to our next set of goals. And please take full advantage of the time that we have together. Don't get lazy, really keep your pen moving. Now, a lot of people say to me, you know, you're successful because you're so motivated. And the truth is, it's not just motivation, it's a good set of goals. I always have goals that I'm working towards. In truth, most people have completely impotent goals that are not empowering or exciting. And what we want to do here is set some goals that will drive you, that you're excited to work towards and that will empower you. And the way to do that is number one, realize now you're about to create a real new future for yourself. And if you don't believe me, stay with me for the next hour and you'll prove it to yourself. This is going to make a major difference to you. Right now, you're not just writing down words on a page, and even though you don't know how it's going to happen yet, when you get something that you really want and you make it strong enough, I mean strong enough emotionally in your brain, I mean you've got strong enough reasons, you will find a way. Now, I've done goal setting workshops. for the past 15 years. And what's kind of amazing is, is the results that it generates. One of my favorite things that I discovered during these workshops is that is when people get completely outrageous and set goals for themselves that aren't realistic. They really have no idea how they're gonna pull it off. And the truth is there's tremendous power if you get committed enough, your subconscious brain gets in the driver's seat and takes you directly to the site of your goal. I just want you to realize that there may be a level of understanding about manifesting and achieving your goals that's beyond what you or I consciously understand. I find it amazing when people follow these instructions and they set their goals and they get strong enough wise and they create pressure, but they do something else that I teach and that's make your goals so real in your mind that you feel as though you've already achieved them. And when you get to that level where your brain starts to believe it's actually happened, something clicks. And quite often, in a very short period of time, that goal becomes realized. Things start to happen. And I know it sounds kind of metaphysical, but I can tell you that it's happened in my life, and it's happened in the lives of hundreds, probably thousands of that I've worked with in the past, and it will happen for you too if you go all in. Now I need to warn you that uh, people around you are probably gonna tell you that you're nuts, especially the ones who have never done a goal setting workshop themselves, which is most people. Soon you'll understand the power of creating something first in your mind. I mean, think about it. Everything around you, everything in your life right now started out as a thought. What are some of the things you have in your life right now? some relationships, some people, some skills, some beliefs. Maybe your current job that was originally nothing but a goal. Now you're in that same moment now of creation. And again, I'm just here to prompt you. You're gonna be doing mostly writing and make sure you make sure you download your goal setting workbook before we get started. So you have a place to write these things down. Don't think you can just think about it, it won't work. When you write things down, something happens. You're physically setting a goal not just in your mind, but on paper.
Now, we're gonna work on goals in three different areas. The first set is personal development goals, which basically means your emotional goals, your mental goals, your social goals, your goals about spirituality, your goals about giving and your physical body. We're gonna spend a great deal of time on who you're becoming or who you're committed to becoming. This is a major set of goals because these are the goals that are gonna determine your lifelong happiness or lack thereof. Number two, we're gonna work on thing goals. And this is gonna be the, the kind of fun stuff. You're gonna get to, a chance to be materialistic even if you're afraid of that kind of stuff. You can write some things down that you wanna have in your life and some things that you wanna do in your life. Then number three, we're gonna work on economic goals because economics is something that plays a major role in your mental and emotional state. Lots of people say that money doesn't matter, but I've noticed that it's those same people who are stressed out of their mind and treating people around them, even their loved ones, harshly because they feel the stress of not having enough. So we're gonna get clear on what you want economically. So let's start with the personal development goals. So here's how I wanna approach this, if you're willing to. Uh, number one, right now, put yourself in a state of mind of absolute and total faith absolute expectation that you can create anything you want in life. I want you to imagine, if you're willing to follow me on this journey, I want you to imagine that you're a little kid again and your birthday is coming up. And when you're a little kid and someone asks you what you want for your birthday, you have no problem coming up with a huge list. Most adults, on the other hand, say, well, I don't know, do, do you think we could uh, do this or do you think we uh, could afford to do that? Most kids say something outrageous like, I want a treehouse. And the adult says, we don't even have a tree. And the kid says, well, let's get a tree and build a tree house. I want you to be in that sense of expectation, that place where you can do anything. You can have anything with no limitations. You want to come from a mental frame of absolute expectations without limits. You can get practical later. Right now, just get it out of you. And I want you to write as fast as you can move your pen. I don't ever want you to stop, if at all possible. You can abbreviate your goals if you want to. So like if you if you want to have a Mercedes-Benz uh, AMG Roadster, just write down AMG and get it out and move on to the next one. So we're going to start with personal development goals. And I want you to imagine who you would like to become, what you would like to do, where you would like to go, what you would like to build or create in your life. What would be some skills you want? What would be some abilities that you'd like? What are some character traits you'd like to develop within yourself? What would you like to master? Under personal development goals are career goals. What are some of the goals that you have for your career? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to, I want, I want you to write for about six straight minutes. Your hand might get tired, but keep going. I want you to write everything you can possibly imagine that would be a personal development goal for you. And again, please don't let your pen stop. Please get creative and be outrageous. Be unreasonable. Write down things that you don't think you could possibly achieve. That's where the fun is in this. I want you to come from the frame of you can have any, like anything you want to develop in your life, anything you want to achieve in your life, anything you want to learn in your life, anything you want to accomplish in your life in the next one to 20 years, even the stuff that you don't think is possible, come from the frame that you can do it. So the time to begin is now. We're gonna get ourselves in state first. Get your pen and paper ready, shut off your phone, remove all distractions, pause this audio if you want to, lock your door so you can't be disturbed. This time is spent just for you and you deserve it. To get in state, we're gonna do a little breathing exercise that I want, <clears throat> I want you to do it with me. Um, I don't know if you've, you meditate, but I learned this amazing meditative breathing technique and we're gonna do a short version of it now. Now, when I first learned this breathing technique, the object was to clear your mind. So you sit in a comfortable position and you breathe 50 full breaths, 50 full breaths. Uh, on your first breath in, you count 50. All the way in and all the way out. And then you count 49. All the way in so you can't get any more in. count 48 and so on and so on. The catch is, as soon as you find your mind wandering off and thinking about something other than the numbers and your breath, you have to go back and start the countdown again at 50. Now, when you think about it, as you sit here right now, breathing normally, breathe all the way in, breathe all, or breathing just not all the way in and all the way out, uh, you're using about 30% of your lungs capacity. Short breath in, short breath out. When you breathe all the way in, 
then push it all the way out, when you use 100% of your lung capacity, you're increasing the amount of oxygen or fuel to your brain by 70%. You're tripling the amount of fuel to your brain. And if you've ever heard that humans only use about 10% of our brain's capacity, this lets you access the other 90%. It's amazing. This is literally supercharging or super fueling your brain. And if you want to do the full exercise, you can pause the audio now and start your countdown from 50. But if you want to move forward with the goal setting, we're going to take five deep breaths to calm ourselves down, fuel our brains, and focus the power of our minds. So take a moment and get ready, because when this breathing exercise is done, we're going to get started with your personal development exercise right away. Okay, so let's get seated in a comfortable position. Close your eyes and breathe all the way in and all the way out. All the way in. Great. If you keep going, you'll start to feel tingling in your fingertips, and that's the oxygen making its way through your bloodstream to your brain. Maybe you feel it already. And my guess is that your mind may have started to wander, even with five breaths. So you can go back and do that full breathing exercise if you like. But for now, let's get started. Okay, here we go. Your six minute. So your six. Okay, let's start that again. Okay, here we go. Your six minutes begin now. Go for it. Again, as you're writing, who do you want to become? What skills do you want to master? What do you want to learn? How do you want to feel emotionally about yourself? What are some, some of your emotional goals? What are some fears you want to conquer? What are some of your social goals? Who would you like to meet? Who would you like to get close to in terms of your own personal development? What teachers do you want to have come into your life? Who would you like to study with? Who would you like to meet personally? What would you like to learn about? Where would you like to go in terms of learning? Would you like to learn to dance? Would you like to learn to sing? Would you like to learn another language or maybe many other languages? Would you like to put yourself in some challenging situations that would make you grow? Maybe swim with a, swim with a lionfish on the Great Barrier Reef?
What are some of your spiritual goals? How do you want to conduct yourself each day? What do you need to do on a regular basis to feel really good about yourself spiritually? How many books would you like to read each year? What books would you like to read? Would you like to learn to act or speak in public? Would writing a book be important to you? Are there some environments you'd like to challenge yourself with? Would you like to learn to scuba dive? Would you like to live in a foreign country? Would you like to take in a foreign exchange student and have them live with you? Would you like to be a foreign exchange student? Would you like to become a big brother or a big sister? What would you like to give in your life? What would you like to build? Keep your pen moving. What are some of your long-term goals in terms of contribution? Who do you want to surround yourself with as your friends? The people who will help shape your values and how you feel about yourself mentally and emotionally. Would you like to learn to be on time if you're not already? Would you like to learn to manage your time more effectively? Would you like to learn to manage other people? Is there anything else that you really want to accomplish? Is there anything you really want to see in life? Maybe you want to look face to face with the Mona Lisa. Maybe you want to have lunch on a sidewalk cafe in Paris. Maybe you want to visit Angkor Wat in Cambodia or Machu Picchu in Peru. I don't know. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Who do you want to experience life with? What would you like to learn? What character traits, when people describe you, who do you want to be? You got physical goals too. What weight do you want to be at? How much energy do you want? Do you want to go on a physical fast? Those are all parts of personal development. You got about 10 seconds left. Come on, finish up now. All right, great. Now you should have a decent list right now of your personal development goals. Things that you want to do with yourself emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, places you'd like to go. It'll take you to a whole other level of joy and pleasure and passion and growth. And these are fabulous. Now, some of them you may be more committed to than others. Okay, so you've got this list. Uh, so go through them, go through each of your goals, and I want you to put a timeline on it. And it's been said that goals are nothing but dreams with a deadline. So even though you don't know how to do it yet, I want you to get a sense of which ones are your priorities of importance. Simply by going through and next to each one of the goals that you wrote down, I want you to write a timeline of when you'll accomplish it by. And uh, your examples are, uh, write a one if you're going to accomplish that goal within one year. Write a three if you're going to accomplish it within three years. Write a five for five years. Write a 10 for 10 years. And write a 20 for 20 years. If it's a goal you're going to accomplish within 20 years. So I'm going to give you about one minute or a minute and a half to do that. So do that now. Remember, you may not know how you're going to accomplish it, and that's okay. Just find out what's most important to you and put a timeline on it now.
Okay, so now the next step that I want you to go through is, I want, to go, I want you to go through this list of personal development goals and I want you to select the top three one-year goals that you've got. Top three one-year goals uh, on your short form list. In other words, look at all the goals you got written down that you want to accomplish within a year or less and I want you to pick three of them that really compel you, that really get you excited. So pick three of them, the top three personal development goals that you're absolutely committed to achieving or accomplishing in the next year. Pick these out right now. And as you pull them out, I want, what I want you to do is write down uh, on one of the following three pages, I want you to write a paragraph of why you are absolutely going to achieve this goal and why you're committed to achieving it in the next year. So again, pick your top three goals from this list and then beside each one uh, on the following pages, you've got three pages, uh, about why you're absolutely committed to achieving these goals in the next year. I'm going to give you about two minutes per goal. Starts now.
All right, fabulous. So now you should have a list of your three most important personal development goals for the next year. Take a look at them and realize just how important they are. And remember that reasons come first, answers come second. Are the reasons to get them strong enough to really get you to follow through? If not, either pick another goal or get better reasons. And if so, you've now got a strong goal or really three strong goals now that you will achieve. Okay, let's go on to the next set of goals. The next set of goals are called things goals. And these are the things that you wanna have, do, be, or create. And they can be materialistic if you want. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, they get hung up about that. Why is it that we allow ourselves to have emotional abundance and spiritual abundance and sometimes relationship abundance, but we cut it off in the area of financial abundance? It's because a lot of us have negative neuroassociations associations that if we have money, boy, we're being selfish. The bottom line is we're going to talk about that in part three of the goal setting workshop when we talk about unleashing your financial genius. Money is no different than anything else in your life. And and you should deserve to have an abundance of it as much as you have an abundance of energy or an abundance of love or an abundance of contribution. So please create for yourself now, starting with thing goals. What are some of the things you'd like to have in your life? We're going to do this pretty quickly. I want you to let your imagination run wild. If there were no limits economically, what are some of the things you'd like to do? What are some of the things you'd like to have in your life? And maybe these things have nothing to do with personal development. They're just pure pleasure and that's okay, that's fine. Again, imagine you were a little kid again and there were no limits. What are some of the things you'd like to have, do, or create in your life? Write them down starting now. And this is anything you wanna have, do, or create in your life. We're gonna give you about two minutes total for this. So make your list of thing goals, go for it now. While you're doing this, let your mind go free and write as rapidly as you can. Don't stop. Write down in short form and get to the next one quickly. Do you want a Rolls Royce? Do you want a yacht? Where else do you want to live? Where else do you want to have a house? Do you want to build a home? Do you want to race camels between the pyramids of Egypt between, with your best friend and win? Do you want to play polo on elephants? What are some of your nitty gritty goals? What are some of the things that people say, oh, you'll never have that? Do you want a swimming pool? Do you want to own a professional sports team? Do you want a helicopter? jet plane? Do you want to create your own music studio? Do you want a separate little cottage or beach house to escape to? Do you want a little sailboat you can escape with? Would you like to go on a tour or own an island in the Pacific? Maybe a timeshare in the Pacific? What would you like to have? What are some of your thing goals? What are some of the concerts you want to go to? What do you want to give to your kids? Would you like to give to your kids? Do you want a butler? Do you want a maid? Do you want someone who will cook great meals for yourself and your family? Do you want a gardener? Okay, so you've got this list of thing goals and hopefully you've got a lot. By the way, how do you feel about them? If you had all these things in your life, wouldn't that be kind of fun? And you say, yeah, to say the least, it'd be fun. Here's what I want you to do with these thing goals. I want you to go through them one by one and write, write down, write a one if you want to achieve that thing in one year or less, three for three years or less, five for five years or less, 10 for 10 years or less, and 20 for 20 years or less. So do that very quickly right now. And remember, you may have no idea what you're, how you're gonna do it. When I set goals sometimes, I have no clue how I'm gonna accomplish most of them. And the timelines may seem unreasonable, but what matters now is 
not how the timeline is met, but whether you're absolutely committed to making these goals happen. The more committed you are, the sooner you'll probably get them. Okay, so now that you've done that, we'll do the third step, just like we did with the personal development goals. I want you to go through this list and look at the things that you are committed to having in your life within one year or less, and I want you to pick the three that are most important to you, the three that will be really drive you, the three that will get you really excited and get you a bit passionate about working really hard and making these things happen, because you have these cool things in your life too, and you can have them. So I want you to do that right now. Uh, what are the top three out of your whole list? And then again, on the next set of pages, I want you to write down a complete paragraph in your goal setting journal about why you are absolutely committed to achieving this goal or having these things in your life within one year. So again, you're going to pick your top three one year goals, things that you absolutely want to have in your life or do in your life, and write a paragraph about why you're absolutely committed to having these things in your life within one year, okay? Go for it, you got five minutes. Remember on this, the purpose is stronger than the object. So know why you want to do these things. It's not just about the things, it's about the feelings that you'll get from having those things in your life. What will it mean? What will you be able to share? How much fun will it create for you? Great job, you should be moving on to the second goal now. All right, that's three minutes. You should be working on your third goal now.
Okay, now that you've accomplished this, you should have two sets of goals. One set that's personal development oriented, mental, emotional, social, spiritual types of goals, physical goals. Uh, and you got three of those that you're committed to achieving within the next year that you're really inspired about. And you've got strong reasons that have made them real. You should also now have three thing goals or things that you want to do or have or create in your life within one year that you're equally inspired about. And we're now going to give you two minutes to work on economic goals. Specifically, I want, I want you to let your mind go crazy, go free. I want you to create. What would be your ultimate financial goals? In other words, what are all kinds of financial goals, certain amounts of money you'd like to earn a month? They don't have to be in any kind of specific order. Do you want to earn $3,000 a month or $5,000 a month or $10,000 or $100,000 a month? What are some of your annual financial goals? What do you want to be worth, like your net worth in your lifetime? What are some of your business goals? Do you have some goals that you want for your company or goals you set for yourself? Do you have some financial goals about how much you want to give each year? Do you have some investment goals? For some people, these goals are the most difficult because they've only got a couple. Well, I'd like to make this much in a year and I'd like to have this much in savings. We'll come up with a whole list and again, just let your mind flow. Anything that's related to finance that you can think of as a goal, write that down. You've got two minutes starting now. Again, anything that's related to financial, any financial goals you've got, write them down. Push yourself. Come on, think. Is there money you want to set aside for your kids, for college or university, for example? Is there a mutual fund that you need to start investing in? Do you have real estate goals in terms of investment? Do you want to buy a rental property that will pay for itself? Do you have an IRA? Should you get an IRA? Do you know what an IRA is? Do you have some kind of retirement account so that in the mature years of your life you have more than enough economics to support you and having a great lifestyle? And I'm not suggesting that at a certain age you just give up and stop working and stop being productive, but what are some of the financial goals that you have at different ages of your life? Where do you want to be? We got about 15 seconds left. Anything else you can think of, just write it down. Okay, time. So I want you to go through these financial goals, and this will be simpler than the other ones that we've done before in terms of organizing our goals. So on the next sheet of paper, taking all this brainstorming into account, I want you to describe for yourself uh, your financial goals for one year from now or less, what you're going to achieve within one year. Um, write a three but for three years or less, five for five years or less, ten for ten years or less, or twenty for twenty years or less. Go for it.
Great, now let's do the final process here on our finances. And I want you to take three of your one-year financial goals and like the other goals we've done earlier, write them down, write down why you're absolutely committed to meeting those financial goals in one year. Write it down now and make it strong enough that you will follow through and make it happen. Go ahead and do that now, you got two minutes. Okay, so what have we accomplished in this workshop so far? So let's review. You now have a whole list of personal development goals and timelines for their achievement. But more importantly, you have three specific one-year goals that you are inspired about and you're committed to achieving. And you know the why. That's the power of this goal-setting workshop. You have a whole list of thing goals, kind of like a shopping list of fun, and you've selected three things that you are absolutely committed to having in a year or less and you know why, so you've got that power behind you. And three, you've got a list of financial goals, of which three of them you are absolutely committed to achieving in one year or less. And again, you know why. So you have nine goals with reasons behind them and a commitment to achieve them in less than a year. I've got a question for you. How would you feel if within one year, all nine of these goals were absolutely mastered and attained? If you had developed those areas of your life, if you had these things in your life, if you were at this level economically, how would you feel about yourself? How would you feel about living and life and fun and your ability to set and achieve goals successfully? Think about it. If you're not thoroughly inspired, you need some better goals. Go back and redefine them or get some stronger reasons. But if you are inspired by them, now you have something that you will achieve. You wanna take these nine goals and keep them in front of you on a consistent basis and look at them daily. You might wanna take a picture of them and set them as the wallpaper on your phone so you're constantly reminded of the goals you set today. What else do we need to do? Two more things. One, we've gotta develop a plan. So you're gonna to need to continue to do, to do some of this on your own. But before you leave this moment, there's something I've learned about goal setting that has really empowered me and that is this. I try to never leave the site of a goal where I have set one without taking some action towards its attainment. I mean right now, so you get the power of momentum behind you. So right now, next to your nine goals, I want you to come up with at least one activity that you can do immediately, like right now or within the next 12 to 24 hours maximum. So let's say for example, one of your personal development goals was you wanted to learn to dance. Well, you're gonna get it to the phone as, as soon as this recording is done and you're gonna make an appointment to visit three dance studios. Do not put it off. 
If one of your goals was to learn a new language, you're gonna make that call. If one of your personal development goals was to go on a diet, you're gonna start that tonight. And if you're gonna start your diet tonight, call someone so they know and they can help to hold you accountable. Or call someone to tell them, don't make dinner, or here's what we should have for dinner. In other words, what's a single action that you could take right now, right away, that will hold you accountable to build momentum as soon as this audio is complete? For your thing goals, if your goal is to have a new Mercedes Benz, call the dealership right away and go down and get yourself a brochure or sit in your dream car and see how it makes you feel. Today is gonna be a massive action day. The next 24 hours will be a day that you will achieve as much or more than any day in your life so far. It'll be a day of making initial progress towards obtaining these goals and you're gonna have a heck of a day. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So here's your assignment. Write down one action you can take beside each one of your nine goals and take that action today. I can't stress that enough. Do not leave the sight of a goal without taking some form of action towards achieving it. Does that make sense? Okay, the other thing I want you to do to finish off this session, I've learned that it's not only useful to understand why a goal is important to you, but also to take a look at what the price would be in your life if you didn't achieve these goals. Think about it like a, like a rocking chair test. Uh, and I offer this test to you as a way of looking at your goals and making sure they make sense for your life. And, and here's what I do. I imagine that I'm 85 or 90 years old and I'm sitting in my rocking chair on my porch and I'm sitting there looking back on my life. And I look at the goals that I considered. Uh, like for example, I decided I wanted to travel the world and vi visit as many cultures as I could. I wasn't sure if I should actually do it or could actually do it. You know, I didn't really have the time. I didn't really have the money. I had so many other commitments, but here's what I did. I had set a goal to travel and I was inspired to get on a plane and visit the world. But I also looked at it from my rocking chair. What would my life have been like if I had not gone traveling and met all those amazing people and created connections that would help me grow my business and my social life? What would I have missed out on? How would that make me feel? I thought about it and I thought, wow, I wouldn't have all that freedom. I wouldn't get to share my travels with all these important people. I wouldn't have taken a bullet train and traveled more than 300 kilometers per hour watching cars and people and farms and chickens fly by. This rocking chair test is so important and I invite you to use it. I use it and it helps you make decisions every day really quickly because it not only shows you why your goal is important and the pleasure that you'll get from it, but it also shows you how you'll feel if you don't have it in your life. And that's your experience. That's, that's you experiencing the pain side of it too. So you get that double push, right? It's like the, the carrot, the motivation, and the stick, the downside motivation and the pain. So now you'll really follow through. So decide right now, how do you want your life to be? When you look back on it, how will you feel about it? That's really the point here. Do your rocking chair test and also get the pleasure and imagine you're there and imagine you've achieved all these goals that you've written down. How do you feel about your life? How much more joy, how much more pleasure, how much more fun will you have had? I hope you look back on this day that you went through the workshop or, or fun shop, I hope, and think about the impact that it had on your life, the magic you created this one day, the day that you decided exactly how you want your life to be. Remember that clarity is power. Enjoy your trip to the rocking chair. Again, this could be the beginning of a brand new life, so make sure you do your rocking chair test and figure out what options you're gonna take today and take those actions. Success from some t comes from taking those initial steps. So use your power today and reap the rewards. Go for it. Share these goals with your friends. Share these goals with your family. If you don't want to, share these goals with me. Send me an email and I'll follow up with you and hold you accountable to these goals and make sure that you achieve them. But really, the more people you share them with, the better it is for you they're gonna hold you accountable just like I would hold you accountable, but really the people around you, your friends and your family, are gonna hold you accountable on a higher level than I will because we don't really know each other on a personal level. Do your rocking chair test. Set your goals. Take action right now. Have an amazing day. I can't wait to see you next time. Cheers, go for it.